I'm just I'm just happy that I, I kept my word to myself. You know, each one of these fights is just me trying to prove that I am who I think I am. I could have easily fought a safe fight. You guys have seen my fights before. I could have made a nice and technical safe striking battle. But this is what the moment they told me I was fighting on this main um, pay per view card, I I knew it was a blessing. I said this is my time to steal the show, and I, I hope I got it done. Yeah, it's interesting. So I mean, you know, you mean you're getting a lot of attention. You're making way of the race. You had that conversation with yourself, like, hey, yeah. I, I, I got to take chances. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Because I, I thought the risk was w w worth the reward, you know? It's like, you might get clipped, you know? Fighting like that, you might get clipped. I'm a I'm a defensive fighter first before I'm offensive. I just have a lot of power, so I get a lot of finishes, you know? Yeah. But I talked to my parents. I talked to my mom. I was like, hey, this is our chance to change our lives, you know? Like, something like this, uh, enough eyes get on, get on me, and it could be completely different from here on. Do you feel like you should have had more attention already? I mean, you've already had some great <laughs> Nah, man. Honestly, I'm not one. I, I don't take, I don't think about myself like all big like that, you know? The only reason why I don't have the attention that I think I should get is because people just don't know me yet. If you don't know, you don't know. You can't be an egomaniac and expect the world to give you something you haven't earned. So, last thing for me, what do you think should come next for you? I mean, you're, you're the key point in your career, man. It's kind of transitionary for you from prospect to contender. Yeah. What, 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 what do you eye next? Right now, honestly, opponent-wise, I, I don't really pay much attention to it. I think I'm in a pretty good place with the company. I'm in a pretty good place with the UFC. And as long as I keep giving performance like this, they, they're get, probably going to keep keep me on the same wave, you know? The only thing I would ask for is to be on the December card in, in Washington, D.C. That's the only request I have. Outside of that, I'm just happy to count my blessings. How important was it to get that finish just because your last one was very impressive, but to get that finish on a big card like this, I think it sort of put the division on notice. Yeah, yeah. I, fe I felt like it was going to be finish or bust, you know? The only, if it wasn't going to, that's why I was a little bit on wilder because if I didn't get the finish, I know the only way I'll get that attention is by having to fight it tonight. So I had, I flipped my coin and luckily I was able to get the finish in the first round, but I would have shot for the fighter tonight too. How did the, the camp go? I mean, it seemed like everything went sort of according to plan. We saw you during the fight with your smile. <laughs> what was it about this fight and, and this card that was so different? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm always this guy, you know. I'm not going to lie. Camp was horrible. Like, I had a really, really bad camp. Like, you know, just constant constant bruises, but you can't let the world get to you. Like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm Nigerian. We're built for struggle. So what you see on the outside might not be what is really going on on the inside. It was a pretty bad camp, but we got it done. You know, you can't, you can't be upset. Anything you can reveal? Usually you can't talk nah, to I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. <laughs> yeah, I know I, I did, but it's it's yeah. problems that are, aren't exactly fixed. I just had to grind through it for this fight. Yeah. So does that make it even sweeter that you overcame all this and you've still got one of the biggest uh, Not sweeter, just I'm proof to myself I'm the person I say I am. You mentioned you want to be on that Washington DC card a second home for you last yes. time the UFC was there, you were a kid, you were Tickets. Yes. How much does it mean for you to be there? What would that feel? It's a fantastic story. You know, I, I try to look at my career as like one big book. You know, after each fight, I always name them chapters. And then in my head, I kind of think about them as like a, a chapter of a book. So that's going to be a hell of an addition to my storybook being in D.C. Like, I honestly, the first time when they were there, I was a kid. I watched it. I, I hope it wasn't a pay-per-view because I'm going to tell on myself and say I stole it. Because I, I, know sure I, I know for sure I didn't pay for it. But that was the first time I even saw my coach on TV. And I saw um, his student, which was another, uh, it wasn't like a Nigerian, but it was somebody from, from PG County, which was another motivating factor. It's like, oh man, this guy's from where you're at right now. If he can make it, you can make it. You, you already know, man. Yeah. The, the, the plan doesn't stop. Yeah. That's the whole reason why I'm doing this, you know. I'm just trying to make the life of the people around me a little bit better and better and better. That 50 G's is still going to the family. We're just going to keep building this. I said I was going to build this house. I'm going to build this house. So, Nick, before your last fight, there was that kick video where your mom, you know, learned from the spar. How is her training going? She, she's doing it? pretty good, you know. I, we, um, I'm going to go against her again. We got to get another sparring session going because now she's learning how to kick. Before, she was only doing um, boxing. And she she's a little bit wild. She puts a little bit too much power on her punches, but she's a hard worker. I get my work ethic from her. So she's trying to get a little bit nicer with her hands. And now that she's learned how to kick, it's going to be a little bit of a harder sparring session. Now that she's training, does she try to give you some advice and tell you what you should be doing? Nah, never that, man. She knows her, she knows her son. She does, she does her part, and that's it. And whenever I get in there with her, she's always happy to try to beat me up. Have you talked to her? 
The first thing I do after every fight is call my mom. I call her and I say thank you for the prayers, you know, that's all it is. She woke me up um, two days ago because towards the end of camp, I started doing it two fights ago. And I think I'm going to make it a tradition from now on. Like towards the end of camp two fights ago, I went to go stay with her because a couple of my roommates got sick. And then the two fights ago, I did the same thing. And at this time, I was like, I didn't have a reason. I just went over there. So the last two weeks of practice, I just go stay over there. And it's just a comfort and feeling, you know, that she would wake me up with her with her voodoo prayers and all that stuff in the middle of the night. And two nights ago, she woke me up and she said, hey, we've all been praying for you. Um, You said you wanted to have the most exciting fight of the night and then you wanted a knockout on top of that. And that's what we're praying for and you're going to get that. So as soon as I called her, she was like, I told you, I told you you was going to get it. You had an exciting fight and then you got to finish afterwards. So that's all it is. It's all blessings, man. Did she tell you the lottery numbers which <laughs> Nah, we don't push it too far. Right now, the prayers are working. You don't want to ask for too much. It is like, all right, throw it away.